Funding for Shaper Illus is provided by Raycon Earbuds, the sponsor of today's video. So, I ranked all 300 plus Phineas and Ferb songs a couple months ago. Or was it a couple years ago? Feels like years. Anyway, this was a truly grueling experience and I vowed to never rank all the songs from a TV show again. But then I noticed that Steven Universe had less than 100 songs throughout this run and I said, yeah, okay, that's doable. So here's every Steven Universe song ranked. Baby! I went off of the list of songs on the Steven Universe wiki, plus I added the theme songs for a total of 88 songs. See that? That's a reasonable number. Anyway, let's get started. Disappointment in the game of life. This is just the word potluck over and over again. I literally only added an F tier to this list because this song sucks so bad. Congratulations, potluck. You've ruined Steven Universe. First the diamonds, and now you. Why is this considered a real song? This is not a real song. Good night, Tri-State Area. I guess you can't win when writing 80 plus songs. Sometimes they're duds and this is the end. Steven and the Stevens really fell apart once Steven left. This blows. Barely a song. Steven, stop wasting my time with one second jingles. I can barely hear the vocals over the instruments. Plus the song is slow and generic. Plus in this house, we don't support Rose Quartz or anything she does. So yeah, no. That's a really cool shade of green. Th th that's the biggest positive I can say about this hilariously lame song. This wasn't included in the article, but like, it's more of a song than potluck. So sure, it's a not awful jingle. There you go, Pearl, I complimented your favorite song. What is with all the feedback noises ruining this song? It's not awful, but it's painfully mediocre nonetheless. This is literally just a single lyric, but it's a good single lyric, so sure. Another single lyric, but at least it blossoms into saying great later on. This is literally just elevator music. Why is this what ends the entire show? What was the goal there? Steven has some good ukulele songs here and there, but this one takes the cake in terms of being the most generic and forgettable one. Great vocals, but there's literally nothing to this song. It's over quickly, it's unmemorable, and it ties into the horrible season five ending bullshit, so it automatically loses points for that too. Top 10 anime theme songs. Number five, Crying Breakfast Friends. A true classic in the realm of anime openings. I mean, that wasn't terrible, I guess. I think the butterflies overreacted. Wholesome little ditty about how time Time is an illusion and meaning has no meaning. And Greg thinks this is a B-side. <laughs> no. It's a seaside. I don't know, it's fine. Kinda cool visually, but also I care so little about everything involving the Sadie killers, so whatever. Literally what I just said for the last one. At least this is shorter. It's kinda nice, but it also kinda sounds like a Barney the Dinosaur song. Just far too simple instrumentally and lyrically, even for this show. It's not bad at all, but it's no let me drive my van into your heart, that's for sure. It was okay. Kinda like Amethyst's entire character. I'm sure it's really beautiful and great for Lapis's character or whatever, but honestly, I was mostly distracted by the background instrumental sounding more at home on the Wii photo channel than a Steven Universe song. Really weird choices were made when writing this one. So, I kinda like how this song sounds militaristic because it shows how Yellow is kinda bad at sounding sympathetic. It musically fits her character very well. But on the flip side, it's not a very good song. Like, it's not melodic, it's not catchy, it's not emotional. I just don't get the appeal with this one. And it's not just because the diamonds are awful characters, but like, that doesn't help. I mean, these are the two best diamonds and I still don't like their song that much. I mean, that was 100% a Barney song, but I kinda like watching Onion attempt to murder people, so points for that. Not bad, but I think Steven should stick to ukulele. Guitar doesn't fit him too well. It's a nice enough song, it just doesn't fit the scene, like, at all. But it's still nice, I guess. Steven's love has limits. Sure, the harmonies are beautiful, but the lyrics are basic and unmemorable. Plus, the diamonds are the absolute worst, so like, yeah, no thanks. This is really just a vision of the upcoming song. So it's extremely short, and yet, it's a pretty beautiful vision nonetheless. You see, if the deli I worked at a few summers ago had a training video that slapped this much, I might still be working there. Whoever pitched this show to the executives has too much money. Kinda exciting, but Steven's part sounds super weird and drags it down a bit, I'm afraid. This is literally just the Texas song from Spongebob, LMAO. It's a fine little duet from an amazing episode, but these two have better duets later on for sure. It's adorable, but not quite as adorable as everyone thinks it is. This episode sucks, but this is a charming enough duet. Almost makes me forget how this episode did the impossible and made Greg unlikable. How did you manage that? I guess the least bad Diamond needed her own song eventually, and this is a decent, if fairly unmemorable number. Reminds me a lot of Ariel Area Rug from Phineas and Ferb 
word for some reason. So yeah, a high C tier song. It's a cute little intro to an iconic episode, but it's outclassed by the rest of the episode's offerings. Short and sweet. It kind of gave me the feels, so that's worth a lot in my book. Also, baby. I mean, it's better than the usual Sadie songs. I guess it's just because they stepped up the songwriting quality for the movie, but still. It's definitely one of the least memorable movie songs for me. Top 10 songs sung before disaster. Just walk away, Steven. She liked the song. That's a win. Now just, just quit while you're ahead, bro. Kind of forgot this song existed, honestly, which is a shame because it's a pretty solid Mr. Universe ballad, no doubt. Honestly, better than the original version it's parodying. Greg should do way more commercial jingles. Not too shabby, I like how Steven's ringtone mixes with the beat of the song, but it does reuse a lot of animation and it's not super memorable. 75% of this song is just smooth jazz that doesn't fit the scene whatsoever. The rest is simple, but honestly kind of nice. Terrible for an action scene, but I think Garnet's vocals in this song pass the vibe check, so that's all that matters. Pretty good aspect of Mr. Universe's prestigious musical history. I can dig it. Reminds me of an old school musical theater opening song. It's very beautiful and has a lot of pretty visuals, and I'm just glad this show hires musical theater people to voice act. More shows should do that. Short and charming and sad, it really gives you the hope that something better is in store for Spinel. Too bad she ends up with the Space Hitlers. Pretty short bop, but a bop nonetheless. We need to be fostering Steven's musical abilities. It's a pretty nice song showing how devoted the B team is to restoring the A team's memories, but still. I think there's a reason the B team doesn't get their own musical numbers that often. How many Sadie songs are there? But seriously though, I kind of felt this one. It's got a nice message and ring to it. Pretty, simple, and sweet. Steven should quartet with Steven, Steven, and Steven more often. A bit of an improvement over Steven and the Stevens. It's fun to see Steven sing about how traumatized he is that he watched himself die. Remember when Steven's trauma was humorous? It's, it's not like that anymore. Super charming and sweet. Dare I say it, it's a jam. Yeah, I said it. It's a fucking jam. Are you happy? I said the thing you were all thinking. It's a mother jam! You were all too cowardly to say it! I said it! That was good. <laughs> okay. It's nice, but it's outclassed by the later version. I mean, there's no emotion here, and Steven's animation is wonky, and that's not Greg's voice, so yeah. Still charming and sweet, though. I really dig the Bowie vibes with this song, and I also really like how Steven is wearing the Sans hoodie. It's clever foreshadowing to when he becomes a monster. Trust me, guys, I can confirm this was intentional. My uncle is Sans Undertale, and he told me this is real, so there. Aww, this is really sweet and sad and stuff. Took a while for Lapis to get a song, and it's not the most memorable thing in the world, but it's still really nice nonetheless. A charming little introduction to some rebooted gems, though you really have to ask if this song was entirely necessary. Still nice and funny though. Great melding of Let Us Adore You and Found. Pretty sweet song music wise, even if it's somewhat problematic character wise, but that's a whole different can of worms. A perfect end to an amazing episode. It brings everything together so well and it's beautiful to see Pearl and Greg forming a friendship as they head home. Touching stuff. Seriously, I don't understand. That kid's talented. He doesn't have to be fighting gems. Pursue a music career because this song is so good. Also, I like the Sadie bit at the end. Sometimes it's nice to just perform in private and feel comfortable comfortable with just doing that. The first musical theatery song in the show, it's a pretty good first number for Pearl, though it's kind of lost some of its luster compared to later songs in the show's run. Really cool in the visual department and in the feels department, plus it's got great vocals. Still, it's not quite the best Ruby X Sapphire song out there. Literally just a short snippet of a Sadie cover of Greg's song, but it sounds great, not gonna lie. I finally really liked a Sadie song, and it's all because this wasn't a Sadie song at all technically. That's kind of sad. How does that boy hit those high notes like Damn! An excellent capper to a really good movie. It ties a lot of the musical themes together and makes for one tremendous, heartwarming send-off. A beautiful embodiment of compromise. It's got stellar colors and visuals, and the song's gentle nature complements Pearl and Greg's reconciliation expertly. This was the show's first truly memorable musical number. It's got a nice vibe, and it perfectly captures the anticipation we felt while waiting to see this fusion thing before our eyes. Nice stuff. Probably my favorite theme song 
long the show would ever have. The animation is popping off. It's so great. And the adaptation of Happily Ever After works perfectly for this little opener. Bonus points for giving Peridot, aka Best Gem, a solo. Literally just a better version of On The Run. It's a wholesome testament to Steven and Amethyst's amazing friendship, and it's cool to slowly see Amethyst regain her memories and take the lead on some verses as the song goes on. It's so great. A true Broadway-esque tour de force. It gives off such great vibes and gets you excited for all the fanciness coming your way. It's great until Pearl ruins it. Boo! You ruined the song! A nice updated version of the main theme. It sounds delightful and it totally helps me overlook how f***ing terrible the ending of season 5 is. Nice stuff! They didn't have to do this in the finale, but I'm so happy they did. I love the gem's enthusiasm and it's all punctuated perfectly with Garnet's he left his family behind. Honestly, my favorite part of the finale. Such a bop. I can see why Rose fell in love with him over Pearl. It's exceedingly simple, but that's what's great about it. It's just such a feel-good little song and the perfect character development experience for Peridot. So this is what Charm sounds like. Just a spectacular, light and fluffy musical number about everyone ignoring their inner turmoil and impending doom. Let's, Let's not, not worry, worry about, about that! Cause Steven's lighter-than-air vocals make for such a delightful lead-in to the big wedding. It's pretty simple music-wise, but it's a sweet, emotional, fantastic moment. The gentle melody and gorgeous art direction make for such an incredible, memorable number. I finally understand what Garnet meant when she said, I am a conversation. This song is really neat because it manages to sound beautiful and melodic while carrying this sinister element to it. The visuals and lyrics support the idea that Pearl is taking Connie down a dark, bloody path. It's this really unique balancing act that propels this song to greatness. Just this beautiful, elegant, amazing song that took three whole seasons to complete. It sounds gorgeous, and I love imagining that it's being sung from Rose Quartz's perspective to Pearl. Mostly because the lyric, I think you're so good and I'm nothing like you, applies to them so well. Because f*** Rose, she sucks. That was two of the most beautiful, amazing, breathtaking verses in the entire series. Now imagine if they made a full song out of it. Seriously, this had the potential to be the best song not only in the movie, but the entire series as well. I have no idea why they just stopped writing it, but as is, it's pretty incredible in spite of how short it is. Also, the instrumental part kind of sounds like Kirby music, so that's really cool. A wonderful theme song that so charmingly expresses what these crystal gems are all about. Great stuff. I can't believe I could possibly hate Pink Diamond any more than I already did. Actually, I can totally believe that. Why did you make Spinel stand there? Why couldn't you at least tell her to sit? Whatever, this is really sad and a perfect illustration of Spinel's tragic backstory. It's got a nice beat to it too, just... Oh, so many feels. Hey, who left this bowl of onions here? This song carries this air of wistful nostalgia and sorrow. It has all the hallmarks of a show-stopping 11th hour power ballad found in a typical musical, with the benefit of stellar background animation and elegant choreography. It's truly something special. The 21st best villain song of all time. It's an absolute bop and a perfect intro to Spinel and all of her stretchy glory. Ideally, it could have been a little longer and less lyrically repetitive, but over Overall, it's intense, super fun, really sad given the context you get later in the movie, just an all-around masterpiece. The real opening number of the movie, f*** all that diamond nonsense, an explosion of good vibes all around. It's exhilarating to finally see our gem buddies at peace and reflecting on how far they've come. Pearl's part is the best, obviously, but every part just comes together into a phenomenal opener. Also, it's way better than that song from Frozen 2, which is ostensibly the same exact song, so suck it, Disney. Steg is a daddy, though. This is an absolutely enchanting number that captures the true essence of Pearl perfectly. Not as a servant of Rose, but as her own independent gem. The instrumentation is fire, the visuals are nothing short of magical, and while the lyrics are a bit simple... Come on, man. It's Steg. This is without a doubt my favorite song from the movie, even with its steep competition. I can't believe they stole this song from Sans Undertale. The first truly amazing song in the show. You'll find it in the dictionary if you look up the term absolute fire. It goes so well with Garnet's battle against Jasper and stands as the perfect representation of the true power of fusion. It's our first introduction to the real Garnet, and it leaves one hell of an amazing first impression. I adore every single thing about this song. The visuals, the vocals, the lyrics, the melody, 
everything. It's like the spirited away of Steven Universe songs. Just this precious, ethereal, unforgettable experience that I absolutely cherish. I listen to it whenever I'm overwhelmed by anxiety and it always manages to calm me down. It's flawless and it's one of the few songs in the show that feels like it was given all the length it needed in order to get its message across. Trust me, even if you've never seen the show before, you need this song in your life. Anyway, do you want to listen to these amazing Steven Universe songs anywhere you go? Sounds like you could use some Raycon earbuds, which I will now tell you about. The Everyday E25 earbuds are amazing. They fit so comfortably in my ear and the sound quality they offer is just fantastic. The Everyday E25 earbuds offer 6 continuous hours of playtime, simple Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice, noise isolating fit. I absolutely love using Raycons for anything and everything, from editing, to watching Netflix shows, to listening to music on the go. Raycons are perfect for any situation where I'm in the need for some high quality sound to enjoy. Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market, which is amazing considering the level of sound quality they offer. They're incredibly budget friendly, yet they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Plus, Raycon has a 45 day free return policy, so you can make sure they're the pair of wireless earbuds for you. If you want some for yourself, go to buyraycon.com slash shaferillist to get 15% off your order. Click the link in the description box below. Again, that's buyraycon.com slash shaferillist. Go check them out. And thanks to Raycon for sponsoring this video.